Welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons. In the previous episode, we entered the Sword and Shield, let's call it Dungeon. Fought through part of the upper ice-filled floor and the magma-filled lower floor. Obtained a slingshot upgrade of all things that lets us shoot three seeds at once in a spread formation. And then in this very room, defeated the dual elemental Frypolar by turning its icy attacks and dousing its fiery uh, other form. And so in this episode, penny pinching respawning bushes. In this episode, we're going to be checking out the second half of the dungeon. And oh boy, guys, they do some really cool stuff here. But you know, first let's get rid of these keys. Since they just can't let us go through even a late game dungeon without something as annoying as them. So we got a whole bunch of torches here. Good news is we have an easy way to light all of them. In very quick succession. Good thing too, because these go out. And now we have a staircase back up to the first floor. There is a uh, spark over there, but let's leave it alone for now. Them. Here we have... Yeah, it's an ice block puzzle. Those things, you know, the things you usually dread in every Zelda game. Well, we have two things we can do here. We can just open the locked door and head onward, or we can solve this thing. And actually, that's what you want to do first. And here's something interesting, because you see, um... Uh, <laughs> um, I actually have always been pretty damn good at these kinds of puzzles before. <laughs> so, um, although I don't quite remember how to do this one, let's do some experimenting. So we have to get all three of these blocks into those three spots along the wall. And as per usual for these types of puzzles, ah, oh, wait, I know exactly what to do already. These blocks slide all the way until they hit another surface, whether that be a stationary block, another ice block, etc. But, so, we can push this up. And since that block is rooted in place now, we can take this block, push it over here and around. And... Damn slippery ice. Come on, there we go. Push this around. Then go around here. And so you want to take advantage of the fact that you can basically create stationary surfaces for these blocks to move up against. And now all you have to do is push these straight across, and you're good. Fun fact, uh, you know that gauntlet of ice block puzzles in Twilight Princess you gotta solve in order to reach it? Oh, by the way, this heads back down, uh, back downstairs, sort of. You know that gauntlet of ice block puzzles in Twilight Princess that you gotta uh, go through to get that heart piece that leaves some people tearing their hair out to solve? Uh, I kinda solved all of them within five minutes of my first try. Yeah, like I said, I'm unusually freakishly good at ice block puzzles. But anyway, we have another side-scrolling section. If you fall, uh, you got these super fast golden blade traps to deal with. If at all possible, use the magic boomerang to get these keys out of the way ahead of time. You gotta jump all the across all these in succession, because you just keep sliding otherwise. As per as per before with the other lava filled passage we saw before. You uh, cannot unfurl rocks, Kate, by just double tapping the button in this, as you just saw there. Force of habit sucks sometimes. You have to hold the button down. Pay close attention to the direction these conveyor belts are moving in. Uh oh. Oh boy. That's bad. That's bad. That's not very good at all. Careful. Well, we lost uh, quite a bit of health doing that. So you want to pay attention to the direction the conveyor belts are moving in, because the direction they actually push you in does correspond to uh, exactly that. And I did that wrong, and pressed the B button when I didn't want to. Let's play Curse, yes, thanks there! Uh, whoa! Let's see this, this one's moving to the left. Careful, careful, time it right, and we're across. This one's a little easier, just got some thwops to deal with. Um, okay, it's a little harder than it seemed. Especially when these can actually hurt you from the sides. I'm not sure why you wouldn't think that, because they are Mario thwops, and now we are suddenly in very... Big danger. This one's going to the left. Jump over it. Uh-oh. Well, um, uh, don't get hit. Okay, no pressure. No pressure. Let's just take this nice and slow. This one's pushing to the left. To the right, I mean. To the and we're dead. Yep! If you do have to come back through here when you're uh, not at the highest of health, you can do something pretty resourceful here if you time it right. Just hit one of these sparks, create a fairy, and just boomerang it from across the gap. 
Good news is the ice block puzzle stays solved, so we can head back down here. Maybe this time I uh, won't die like an idiot. Let's get these keys out of the way. That one too. Time it right. Jump, 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 double jump, and we're across. And now back to the tough part. This is going to push us to the right. we got to jump over this. Time it right. And got it. Now you want to keep moving against these... No, actually, what you want to do is wait for it to come back up and then jump. That was almost bad. You know, because if you fall down there, you got to jump all the way across that section uh, previously with the golden blade traps to get back up top there. And we're back to um, Terra Not So Firma because it's all ice. If you look across there, you can see that switch we saw before we headed downstairs the very first time in this dungeon. And so now we can create a shortcut to get over to this section a little easier if we need to. Although, you do have to walk quite a bit to get to the uh, others, to the northwestern side of the first floor, so it isn't a huge shortcut. It's more for convenience. Now we have those annoying circular blade traps again in a room with ice and a red wizard that decided to spawn on top of us because he thinks telefragging is a thing in this game, apparently, even though it only just does damage. Ropes falling down. Why are they throwing ropes at us in the eighth dungeon? That is so strange. The good those I can get, I just, I don't know. And another unusually easy, unusually easy, unusually easy, there, switch to hit. This room's rather un interesting and unusual. Yeah, some shutters here. The east one opens if you manage to, careful, if you manage to press something onto the switch there. And if we, yeah, let's just bypass the gap entirely, shall we? Heading through here, we'll reveal a ball and chain soldier and a booby trap. Well, sort of, he's not that hard to kill, and you can uh, replenish your reserves in here once you've taken him out. I wonder if this is like some kind of storage room for the soldiers in here, you know, provided those ball and chain soldiers weren't just reanimated armor of some kind. But so to open that west shutter, we have some Poles' voices. You know the secret to killing them, right? Either use bombs or... And killing all the enemies in here opens the west shutter. And here we have something a little more important. None other than... The boss key! And anything through here dumps you right back off where you started at the ice block puzzle room. So, we've gone a full loop, explored almost the entirety of the first floor, well, the entirety of the perimeter of it anyway. But now, we can head through here. And this is the part where if you uh, miss one of those keys in the first half of the dungeon, it would come back to bite you, you know where. So we have some sparks to avoid, not a huge problem. See, only two, th this is, this room is not that hard to negotiate, it's strange. So here we have some uh, unusual ice crystals, reminiscent of the stuff we, uh, reminiscent of the stuff we uh, created when we were fighting Fry Polar. So that's got to have some kind of significance, especially since it's not disappearing when we throw it. The magical ice freezes all. Well, that's an interesting hint, but first of all, we want to head through this abominable wall. Wait a minute, what's this? So we want to try and follow that pattern. And if we don't, well, we gotta go back in and we gotta go back out, come back in, and try again. It is rather complicated of a uh, sequence, if at all possible. Uh, use the blocks to the left as some kind of uh, point of reference. The path does. Oh wow! Crossing back over onto the previous block actually. Oh, I didn't know that. Huh. So the pattern does occasionally change, so keep that in mind. All the way up there. Two, three, four, up two. This one seems a little easier. Of course, now that I said that... Got it! And it makes a key drop down. You know we're gonna need that. So before we uh, mess around with those much at all, let's take a look into the surrounding rooms. Here we have some green zoles of all things. 
a some kind of fiery pit through which fire keys are coming out of and a staircase downward. Well, we know there's lava down there, but I don't think we were quite expecting to this extent. So yeah, there is a lot here and there's a chest sitting all by its lonesome that we're not going to reach without burning our aft ends. And here's another staircase, a chest. Oh no you don't. Yeah, if fire keys manage to hit you, they become regular keys, although they can duck back down into the lava to get their fire back. And here we have some bombs. Yeah. Head up here, we find ourselves in a different room with another one of those fire pits. Hmm. Here's a mine cart. Getting us through here into a room with a bunch of spike beetles and a beamos. Oh boy. Yeah, as previously mentioned, uh, if I did mention it once, you can't block Beemos lasers. He's not with this shield. So, if we can at all possible manage to overturn that thing and defeat it without getting lasered again. That went surprisingly well. We have another staircase there, another locked door. And here we have more lava. It just keeps stretching on. There's a staircase sitting in the middle of nowhere. This has a ferry in it for your convenience. There's just, there's a lot of red stuff here, I'll tell you that. And this is such a, an interesting and really unique design. Like, like they have done some stuff with freeform, uh, freeform dungeon wall design stuff elsewhere in the game, but nothing as wide open as this. It's just really interesting. So we're going to use the key we picked up. Whoa to unlock this door and head through here. Careful. Where we find... Well, that's not gonna help much. Another dead end. With a lock block. So clearly, that has some kind of significance in the rooms, otherwise they wouldn't stick a lock... Uh, they wouldn't stick a lock block in front of that one. So it seems we've reached an impasse. And we're gonna have to turn around and figure out what to do from here. But as you'd imagine, those ice blocks, chunks, crystals, what have you, have some kind of significance. But, what exactly is it? Well, that doll statue did say it freezes all, correct? So if we were to say, uh, head through this, head through the staircase, well, it doesn't let us. But if we were to throw one down through here, check this out. There must be some pretty potent ice, but because it dries out a significant section of the lava below. Enough so that almost all of it on this particular screen is safe to walk on now, letting us reach this chest over here, containing another small key. You know we're gonna need that. We saw at least one lock block already. The lava does reach quite a distance, including letting us get over here. That's gonna be interesting. And if we so may, the fact that it covered that, careful, that it uh, let us reach that uh, middle pathway safely. Let's ride the minecart over here and take advantage of that. Let's get the shield out. Back. Back, get back. See if we can get a heart, that's convenient. And so now we can head back through here this way. Take care of the fire keys, maybe it'll drop another recovery heart, you never know. Head up here. And that minecart over there is looking rather tempting. Let's say we pick up another one of these ice shards and head through it. Head through it. Head onto the cart and through that door. So we're stuck riding through here. If needed, you can use the ice block as an impromptu weapon. If the wizard robes were to so uh, cooperate. Doesn't do much damage, though. Let's open that. Careful. Let's open the lock block. Throw it down. <laughs> and so you caught a glimpse of a third lock block. A oh, third locked something in this section. Damn Stalfos. But we have, uh, we're lacking another key. And as you can see, they just combine, they combine the... Let's not, let's not get ahead of myself here. They combine the use of the locked doors, lock blocks, and the sections that you have to freeze or cool off 
in a way that creates this complicated network of passageways. Flip the switch, letting us reach this section here. And it's just so convoluted, and it's just unlike anything you'd see you see elsewhere in the rest of the game. And it's just some masterful design. And now we're gonna freeze over, we'll cool off this area. Got a glimpse of the boss door there. We gotta work our way toward that, as you know. This does uh, take a bit, unfortunately. We do a lot of trekking back to the main room here to grab more ice crystal to, to uh, throw down onto those lava fountain generator things. So, we can head through here now. Careful though. And since we rode this minecart all the way over here from, that was close, from this room the first time we went through here, now we can use it to get back here. If you had not done that, you would have found yourself at a dead end and had to come back through here and ride the minecart into that room, then come all the way back just to have access to it before, and you get the idea, right? And now, we can freeze over this one. I keep saying freeze over, even though that's not exactly what's happening. You know, you're you're not completely freezing the lava, you're making it cool enough to where you can walk on it without, you know, burning to death. So let's head down here and check out our handiwork. This huge area now is safe to walk on. And if we try to head up here, we find there's that lock block before and a whole bunch of pots. It seems we're approaching the boss door. But we're in desperate need of not only some healing, but another key. But if we were to say, check out around here elsewhere. After this east section, you know, and the way they use the rocks to block off these areas, it's just, it's so, it's so brilliantly done. It's just, I, I gotta really give them props for the second half of this dungeon because it's, it's extremely well done. And up here, nothing to be found, but if you remember, if we head through here to the south, we see that staircase that was off by its lonesome before that we can reach now. And that's how we find ourselves at the section before. These are almost come to life, but they're not really that dangerous. And through here, and into here with these sparks, more healing if you needed it. Careful. Take care of the sparks, they do orbit around anything uh, that's... They do orbit around whatever they're uh, touching, so if you cut off part of their uh, the part of their root, they'll just go around the new one. And here is our last key. And just about the entire dungeon has been explored. Look at that. We know what that means, guys. We got a boss to fight. And I gotta say, it's really something else getting so close to the end. It's uh, <laughs> there's been there's been so many setbacks, so much that's gone awry with this project that it's just really something else to be nearing the end. I have to go around here. Yeah, uh, this bottom floor is, this large area is kind of cut off into two sections thanks to the rocks and blocks. That's just, it's just really something else to be uh, nearing the end of this. It's just hard to believe, you know? It's <laughs> So, uh, we can uh, unlock the block here. Mine the fire keys, they're everywhere here. They seem to be giving us an awful lot of Pegasus Seeds and other Seeds. And so, we head through here. Here's our boss. As you might expect, we want to have the Hyper Slingshot on, uh, on cue. And so we head through the door. Evade the Fire Keys and kill it. And through here... is the first time in the entire game where we'll be fighting a boss that did not exist in a previous Zelda game. Here we have... Well, this thing's got a couple different names, known as Matalock in Japan and a couple other places, and referred to as a Medusa Head in uh, a couple player's guides westward. This thing is about as much of a pain in the ass as Medusa Heads are in Castlevania games. To its spread shots of fireballs, its specialty is a laser that uh, does that, as well as, uh, as you would expect a Medusa Head is being able to turn you to stone. Rock's Cape helps a lot here if you got it, as would be Pegasus Seeds. So how do you hit this evasive pain in the ass? Well, the dungeon item in this dungeon is the Hyper Slingshot. And as you'd expect, haha, 
And as you'd expect, here comes the stone attack. Jump over the fireballs. As you'd expect, you will use the dungeon item to some extent here. But, something you might not think of at first is, if you remember, Pegasus Seeds have a secondary use when you hit something with them. When fired from a slingshot. They freeze your enemies in place. And so that is how we're... Let's, un let's unequip the red ring real fast. That's not the... T there. That is how we're going to be doing damage in this fight. Oh, and uh, it unfreezes after a single hit, so uh, make your attacks count. It also doesn't stay locked in place very long at a time, so... Uh, well, this isn't good. We are... Uh-oh. This is, this is bad. Um, we're getting rather low on health. Let's hope... We're all, let's hope we can just about kill it. Oh boy. Yeah, let's uh, let's play it safe. Get Rock's cape ready. Jump over. Oh boy. Let's careful. Oh boy. Got it. Ooh, that was close. Uh, and Matalock, just like the seven bosses before, it has fallen, giving us another heart container. Shame we couldn't complete that final heart, because we're two heart pieces short, thanks to the RNG. And without further ado... Our final essence of nature. You got the changing seasons and essence of nature. Scattered seeds sprout in spring, grow in summer, bear fruit in fall, and sleep in winter. Sleep through winter is an endless cycle of life, the changing seasons. Link, you already have the eighth essence. The changing seasons have filled me with my former power. I have something to give you now, so come see me. And with that, that's all eight main dungeons of the game taken care of. I, this is really something else. It's just, you start a big project like this and the end of it feels so distant. And now it's just, it's here. It's finally here. And so now, next episode of Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons, we're going to make our final preparations and then set off to finally confront General Onox and Free Din. Just hard to believe, isn't it? And so... See you guys as we prepare for our final battle next time!